hello there YouTube well, this is Chuck and today I'm coming to you from inside my shop slash garage slash man cave uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the challenges I ran into when I built the van uh, I was gonna shoot this outside today but it's a it's a cool windy blustery day here in the mountains where I live and uh, it's actually a storm moving in this evening and and we're supposed to get maybe the first snow of the season tonight uh, which would be nice we're only supposed to get a couple of inches but uh, today I thought I'd, uh, I'd expand on my van tour video that I shot a couple of days ago and I'd talk a little bit about some of the stuff I did building the van and some of the challenges I ran into. Now, if any of you are gearheads and ever operated, ran old vehicles, either because you had to or because you liked to or because you're a hobbyist or restored them or whatever, uh, you know that uh, when you buy an old vehicle and you don't know the history behind it, uh, you're always going to run into some kind of challenges and some of them are pretty common and some of them can be pretty unusual. And that's the same what happened when I bought the van. When I decided to experiment or, or, or explore the idea of building a camper van, um, I started looking around for a used van I, and within a couple of weeks I heard about the one that I ended up buying and it was uh, the people that were selling it lived less than a mile from me. And so I went over to look at it and the, the Two things I noticed when I first laid eyes on it. The first thing was, was the uh, it had the fiberglass high top, and of course I knew what that what those were worth. Uh, and the other thing that I liked about it was it wasn't white. I whatever my reason, it's just me, but I I don't really care for white bands. I wanted something a different color, and uh, and I kind of told myself that if I got a white one, I was going to probably do something with it. I you know whatever rattle can paint job or something. Anyway, the people that were end up selling the van, uh, they were they bless their hearts, they were not wealthy people, and they'd pretty well run it as long as they could run it. And um, it needed a, some stuff, and they didn't have the money to fix it. And they finally got frustrated enough with it where they just wanted to see it gone. And so I was able to pick it up for fourteen hundred dollars, and uh, and it it would run and it would drive, but it it had pretty significant things wrong with it. And uh, one of the things they told me about was was that it had a charging system issue that they'd been trying to address and that it was overcharging. Uh, the alternator was overcharging and boiling the battery. And so uh, you know, I'm an old gearhead with a garage full of tools and so I, that didn't that part didn't bother me. I knew I could probably figure it out and I ended up ultimately I did figure it out. It turned out to be something different than I thought but I, I finally resolved it. And the other thing is, is the tires were bad and it actually had one of the tires, the front tires had a tread separation to the point where it was literally not safe to drive. Uh, so the only way to address bad tires is put new tires on it. And uh, it has an odd size. You can't find used ones. So, and so anyway, I had to park it for a little bit and just drive at the absolute minimum uh, to raise up, uh, to save up a little bit of money so I could buy a set of tires for it. So what I ended up doing is I put the bad tire on the back. So at least if it blew, it was on the back. And I just didn't, I drove around town a little bit, but I didn't leave town with it. I was still trying to resolve the electrical issue at the time. Another thing is, is that uh, it, uh, somebody, and they, they told me it wasn't them. They told me it was a previous owner, but somebody had hauled dogs in it. And it smelled to high heaven like a 10-year-old dog kennel. I mean, it was terrible. And someday I'll probably do a whole video on how I address that, although, you know, it depends on how long this one goes today, uh, whether I'll talk about that. Uh, but it had a, uh, originally it had a vent in the roof and the vent was gone. So there was a big hole in the roof. Uh, so it was open to the elements. And, and uh, I was surprised there wasn't more damage inside from the rain than there was, but it really wasn't that bad. So obviously I solved that by just buying a, going to an RV store and actually I think I ordered it through Amazon. I ordered a, I got the dog trying to climb up in my lap here, uh, ordering from Amazon. Uh, here, say hi to the, say hi to the camera. Here, look over there. Say hi to the camera. Can you say hi to the camera? Okay, now get down. So I ended up get, uh, ordering one through Amazon. It was only like 35 bucks. And so I solved that pretty readily. And, and, uh, but the th the target of my video that I want to talk about today was the cooling issue. It had a it had a leak, a coolant leak coming off the engine, and of course that could be most anything. So uh, the coolant in it 
uh, looked terrible. It didn't have any antifreeze. It was water. It was rusty. It looked absolutely horrible. And so when I got it back home and, and uh, crawled underneath it to try to figure out where this coolant leak was coming from, because it was relatively significant, and uh, it turned out to be just a freeze plug on the side of the block. Well, it was in kind of an odd place, and I didn't have a set of freeze plug drivers to change it. That's a special tool. And I was still working at the time, so I took it over to a shop where I knew the guys, and I, I asked them to, to uh, fix the freeze plug, and I asked them why they had it apart, and why they had the coolant out of it to go ahead and do a cooling system flush on it, and then, of course, put new coolant in it. And, and they did that. And so uh, uh, it seemed like it was fine. And uh, so I, I, after I, I drove it around, put some tires on it where I could drive it and built out the interior. And if you haven't seen my van tour video yet, go back and watch that. I just, I just filmed it a couple days ago when the weather was better. And uh, so everything seemed to be doing fine. It, although then it started seeming like it was, it was heating, getting over there. The temperature was getting a little hotter they're running a little hotter than it should. And so I was keeping an eye on that. And uh, the uh, well, radiator that was in it was the original, probably the original one, but it was the original style one. It was the brass radiator. And uh, so anyway, I took it on a few trips. And, and uh, finally, I was headed up, uh, going up the mountain one day to meet with my squatching partner, Kevin. And, and uh, that wasn't too long after we first met. And uh, there's a pretty good climb going up the mountain, and it overheated. And so uh, I nursed it into a little community up there and stopped at the fire station, and they knew the guys working there and borrowed a hose from them and cooled it down and made sure it had, had uh, enough uh, water back in. It had water in it at the time because it was still during the summertime. And left out of there and started to make the rest of the climb to the top. And by the time I got to the top of the mountain, it was pretty hot again. So the road to go up there, there's a side road that takes off off the highway right at the top of the mountain. So I figured, well, once I get on the side road and start driving slow, it'll cool back down again. And uh, and I'll be fine. And I'll, I'll just nurse it home. And uh, so I turned off the side road and I got about a mile down the side road. And, and it was not getting any cooler it was still it was still running hot and all of a sudden there was this loud <laughs> sound and I looked in the mirror and here's all the steam coming out the tailpipe and I thought oh crap I blew a head gasket or cracked a head or something that's something that's catastrophic it's something something happened uh, so uh, I ended up, I fiddled around with it and I was going to try to nurse it back home, but it, it, there was no way that was going to happen. So I finally ended up having to call a tow truck and had to have it hauled home. And uh, so I got home, I got to looking at it and, and uh, looking at the radiator, I could tell by looking down, taking the cap off. And of course the coolant was all gone by that time. And, and looking in there and I see where the, the uh, tubes were all full of crusties and and debris build up, and, and uh, so it was pretty obvious that, that it was a radiator issue that had caused it to get hot. And uh, so I ended up uh, tearing it apart right out here in front of my garage door, and I, I pulled the heads off of it, and sure enough, it had a blown head gasket. And uh, so I ended up fixing it and, and uh, did it by myself with the exception of when I set the heads back on it, I had to, uh, my nephew come over and Help me do that because there's a specific way you got to do it, and uh, the uh, it's it's kind of hard to do with one person in a van where the motors where the motor is. And uh, any of you have ever worked on vans, of course, the majority of the engines inside the cab, and and but once you take out the seats and pull the with the cover, which we call the doghouse off, there's actually pretty good access to it. And uh, but the heads are you know they're fifty pounds plus a piece, and then especially I'm an older guy and I just, you know, and you got to set them on real carefully because if you, if you set them on wrong, you'll mess up the new head gasket and then it, it won't work, it won't seal. So I, anyway, I had my nephew come over and it didn't take us 10 minutes and the rest of it I did all by myself and got, got it all put back together. And as a part of that, uh, I, w I needed to do something with the radiator. Well, all the towns used to have old radiator shops where the Guys would take them apart, and they'd, they'd uh, what they called rotted and rotted them, 
And basically what that meant is they put them in a, like an acid bath that would take all the stuff out of them. And then they had these little rods that were the same size as the cooling passages and they'd stick them down each one and, and make sure to get all the debris out of them. And then they put them all back together. And it was a pretty labor intensive process, involved a lot of chemicals. And, and, uh, we had a radiator shop here in town, old guy ran it. And, uh, and he finally, he finally got too old and had to retire. And then since then he's passed away, bless his heart. He was a friend of mine. And, uh, so there was, there was no radiator shop here. So I, I thought about, I could take it down to the Metro Phoenix area somewhere and have it done. Uh, but then I got to thinking, well, you know, the modern radiators are made out of aluminum and plastic and they're glued together and they're supposed to be more efficient. And so I thought, well, I'll just, I'll replace it. Uh, so I did. I went ahead and I ordered a radiator for it. And uh, it turned out it, from Amazon of all places. And it turned out they had a, uh, they were, had a uh, stock reduction or something, or a, they only had a few left of a particular brand or something. And they had them on sale. And I picked up a brand new radiator uh, for $97, which was a good deal. So I put the new radiator in it and got it all back together and I drove it and everything was fine. And uh, so I drove it for, oh, I don't know, a few months. And then all of a sudden I noticed it was starting to get hot again. Okay, so now, um, you know, the radiator, the original one was radiator number one. The one I put in it was radiator number two. So it started getting hot again and it started heating up again. And I, it really baffled me. What in the world could be wrong with it? I, I put all new, the whole cooling system, the water pump, everything was, I put new on it when I had the motor apart. And so I couldn't figure out why in the world it would be overheating. So I get to looking at it and looking down and here, once again, all you can see is down where the radiator cap's at. So looking down in there, uh, I realized there's a whole bunch of flakes of rust and nodules of cast iron nodules of some kind they're rusty as well and it looked for all the world looked like gravel in there well what it ended up happening is is all those years that that motor had sat with water in it it's developed rust in the corners and all that kind of stuff and as i drove it got it out on the highway and exercised it a bit well it, it gradually loosened all that stuff up and it's circulating through the cooling system and we'd get to the radiator and the bigger pieces would get caught in the radiator tubes and eventually it built up enough it ended up blocking them well there's no radiators there's no way to take them apart and clean them they're glued together so basically what happens is your radiator ends up becoming a very large very expensive cooling system filter and so I realized that that's what had happened. When I had the guys do the cooling system flush, they'd shaken all this stuff loose. And it had been circulating around there. And gradually, as time went on, it was the bigger chunks were getting caught and they were blocking the cooling passages on the radiator. And so I, I, once I realized that's what was happening, I thought, well, you know, there's, there's really no way to fix this. Uh, the radiator, you can't disassemble them and reassemble them. There's not any way to do it. So the only thing to do was to go ahead and replace it again. So this time, uh, there, I, the cheapest place I found where I could lay my hands on one right away was our local AutoZone. And I ended up buying another radiator. That one was $145. So now we're on radiator number three. And... I figured, well, it, it caught everything it's going to catch, and we're going to be fine, and uh, you know, I won't have that issue again. I thought about putting a, a, a filter in in it, but I really didn't think it, you know, I, I figured I was fine. I, I, I took my licks. It cost me some money, but and during this whole process, uh, I decided that I liked the van, and that I, I went from trying to do it cheap to trying to do everything right. And so I started to, you know, paying a little more attention to doing things the way everything should be done to start with. And, and uh, so I ended up uh, changing out the radiator. This would be radiator number three. And 
radiator number three was fine. Uh, drove it all over the place, uh, up and down the mountains and uh, over to a couple of trips to Western Arizona, actually four trips to Western Arizona uh, for various van builds and the RTR and so forth. And uh, the, uh, so then fast forward now to here just not too long ago, uh, four years down the road, uh, I went up on the mountain and we had a very productive uh, visit with our with the forest people and that's a whole nother series that I'll do talk about and the Sasquatch folks and on the way home I noticed that the darn thing is running hot again it wasn't it wasn't overheating but it was running hotter than it should have been uh, so when I got home, I started trying to figure out what, and, you know, and I, I, I put a, you know, four years ago, I'd put a new thermostat in it and, and it had a new water pump and everything. So I, I, I didn't, I wasn't sure what in the world it could have been. And in the meantime, I'd actually bought an, a, a, one of these little uh, cameras, camera setup with a little tube thing for looking, for putting down a spark plug hole and looking inside cylinders and, you know, looking it up and for diagnostic purposes, uh, handy little deal. It was like fifty six dollars, I think, from Costco, and they had them. They had them there, and it struck my fancy, and I bought one. So I had a camera with a light on it, so I could. So this time, uh, I stuck the camera down inside the radiator, and I started looking around. And I'll be darned! After four years, this number three radiator now uh, was plugged up with debris. It looked like it had gravel in it. And sticking a magnet down there, it all stuck to the magnet. So it was metal fragment. It was metal. And uh, but of course, once again, there's absolutely no way to change it out. There's no way to. There's no way to clean it. There's no way to get the stuff out of it. At least not that I'm aware of. I mean, there may be somewhere, but I didn't know how to do it. And also, I noticed the way these things are made, the two the cooling tubes that go down from the top tank to the bottom tank. They have almost like a little crimp, both at the top and at the bottom. And that means, of course, that that uh, they're a little bit smaller at the top and the bottom, restricted at the top and the bottom, uh, more than they are in the middle. And so what that told me is that stuff that made it into that tube probably didn't make it all the way through and out the bottom. It would have got hung up in the bottom somewhere. So gradually, as before, uh, as those tubes got restricted, they built up to the point where there was enough restriction. So eventually, the radiator's just not cooling like it's supposed to, and the, and the rigs are running hot. And uh, fortunately, this time I didn't overheat it, so I didn't damage anything. I just I caught it because I was watching the watching the temperature on it, and uh, the uh, so now uh, just the other day, a couple weeks ago now, I ended up putting in radiator number four. Uh, once again, I found one on Amazon. This time, and this is just, and this is unfortunately what's been happening with everything with our inflation now. Uh, this radiator was $200. So the first one was 97, the second was 145, this one was 200. Uh, but I got another new radiator and I put a new radiator in it. Hopefully this one's gonna last. And hopefully the uh, I won't have to deal with this with this problem anymore. Of course, I put all new coolant in it. And everything looks fine. It's clean. It doesn't seem to be getting doesn't seem to be getting warm. Uh, I haven't had it out on a trip on the road yet, but I have driven it now. The dog's pushing against the table. Uh, I have had it on the road far enough that uh, that I it's gotten it up to temperature, and I think I'm going to be okay. Uh, we actually were going to be on a trip. We were actually going to leave today. And we were going to be gone for five days up on a, another trip up on a different mountain. Uh, but with the storm coming in and snow and all that, we obviously decided that it would be a better idea. To, but they say discretion is the better part of valor. We called off the trip and we're all staying home. So that's kind of my cooling, my cooling system story. Uh, we're up to about 20 minutes on that. I think I got a little bit more time. So uh, let me talk about the cleaning part of it. And the, uh, as I said, the thing smelled like a, a dog kennel. Well, after about a parking it outside with all the windows wide open and letting it air out for about a month when the weather let me do that, and about a gallon of Febreze, 
uh, I was not gaining on it. Uh, every time you closed it up, it still smelled. It was better, but it was not where it should have been. And it was pretty bad. And and I knew I was going to put a bed of some kind in there, and I knew I was going to be sleeping with all that. And and who knows what kind of who knows what kind of critters were living in the car. You know, the walls were carpeted. And who knows what kind of bacteria or whatever was living in there. Uh, so I was going to, I finally decided I was going to gut the whole thing. I was going to gut it right down to the bare metal and I was going to start over and put walls in it. And I was just getting ready to do that. And at the very last minute before I decided to, to do that, I got to thinking, I wonder if I could have this professionally cleaned. Uh, well, there's a, a company here in town that, that does that. They're, they started out with carpets and they expanded into other stuff. And, and uh, the, the owners, the, 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 the wife of the, of the couple that own it, her father actually uh, was another retired fire guy who actually used to work with me years, for many years. And so I went over and I talked to them and I said, is there anything you can, you can do with this? Is it possible to professionally clean this? And they took a look at it and they, and they, they, it was a little out of the ordinary for what they do, but they said, yeah, we can, we can give this a try. And uh, so basically they, they went in there with their, their equipment and they steam cleaned the entire inside of the van. And then they treated it with what they called an antimicrobial treatment, which they said would kill anything that was still in there. And uh, it cost me at the time, cost me $237. But I was absolutely amazed. This filthy, damn nasty looking inside of this van, it absolutely looked like it was brand new. And it smelled good, smelled new. And there was no evidence of the dog smell. Speaking of dogs, I got one here that's giving me heck. I shouldn't have brought him out here. Get down, get down. And uh, so it, it, uh, it ended up being money well spent to have it professionally cleaned because I ended up not having to deal with putting all new walls in it. It saved me a tremendous amount of work and I'm still running it to this day the way that was. Uh, so I'd gone ahead in the meantime, before I had them come in, I'd, I'd gone through there and I scraped all the old uh, residue from the old carpet off the floor because it, that was still stuck there. They put the carpet padding down with adhesive on plywood and of course that was a mess to get up and it, it took me a while to do that, but you know, I'm retired, so I had time to do it. And, uh, even though I was still working at the time and so I didn't have the amount of time I have now, but so that solved my, that solved the, the stink like a dog issue, uh, that solved the cooling issue, although the cooling issue came back to haunt me and, uh, the tire issue got solved by just putting new tires on it. Uh, the electrical issue, uh, it turned out, the electrical issue, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, it took me quite a while to figure out what it was, and it took me about 30 seconds to fix it, and basically somebody somewhere for some reason had decided to tie the field wire and the armature wire together coming from the alternator. And what that had did is it that told the alternator to charge flat out all the time. And so what it was, the alternator was charging 19 and a half volts. Well, 19 and a half volts is enough to fry every light bulb in the vehicle and damage most of the electronics and boil a battery. So what would end up happening is, is they were trying to drive it. It was boiling the battery and they thought the battery was bad. And so they kept putting batteries in it. And it kept boiling the new batteries because that wasn't the problem. Uh, they kept they put alternators in it. They put a new alternator in it. Well, the new alternator was doing what it was told, and, and it was charging full out. Put a new regulator in it. That was charging full out. And it also had, uh, at the time, it had two 6-volt golf cart batteries in series under the floor in the back as, as coach batteries, and it fried both of them. And uh, so... It was interesting, you know, I, I started out changing out the, the voltage regulator because that's logically what you do when one's overcharging. And when that didn't help and uh, I started fiddling with it, I, I took all the components apart, had them bench tested, found out that all the components by themselves were fine. It's just when you put them back in the van is when it was a problem. 
So that led me to start looking through the wiring harness. And that's when I eventually found when this individual, for whoever or for whatever reason, tied these two wires together, which told the thing to charge flat out. And so I disconnected that connect the where they tied them together. And immediately everything straightened out and everything was fine. And I have not had a problem since. I've had to replace the I had to replace the batteries. I had to replace every light bulb in it, including the headlights. Uh, I burned up the radio. Uh, so I had to put a new radio in it. So I put a better stereo in it anyway. Uh, the gauges on the dash, uh, it damaged them to the point where they're still not super accurate. The fuel gauge isn't accurate. And, uh, but it's a, enough to where I can get by with it. And as, as that was kind of another oddball thing. I got, like I said, it took me a long time to figure out what the issue was. And if I'd have paid a garage to do it, it would have probably been, by the time they chased it down, figured it out, they'd have probably charged me several hundred dollars to, to figure that out. But I was able to do it myself. Uh, if somebody would have tried to buy that van and decide to try to live in it and fix it at the time, and if they didn't have any money, it would have been an absolute total nightmare. But as a project vehicle for somebody like me, who's an, an old DIY gearhead, shade tree mechanic, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, it ended up being a challenge. And, and uh, But I got it resolved. And uh, it's been, other than the, the radiator issue that I talked about, is the van actually has been pretty trouble-free. Uh, like I say, I had the motor apart once and and uh, and, it, and it runs good. It doesn't get real good mileage. Uh, uh, it's an old vehicle. I've, I've put about, since I've had it, I've put about 15, 16,000 miles on it, but it's still under 80,000 miles. It's gonna, it's coming up close to 80,000 miles now. And uh, which is really not a lot of miles for an old vehicle like that. So, uh, that's part of my, my, my build series. Uh, I'll come back and do another video sometime and talk about the uh, putting the interior in it and how I did that. Uh, once again, I shot a van tour video here the other day and, and that talks a little bit about it. But of course, there's always, there's always more to the story. And uh, when you're an old storyteller like me, uh, some of the guys that know me always tell me there's nothing like it. There's, there's no such thing as a short story when, you, when, when I'm talking. So it's coming up on 28 minutes since I started filming this. And so I'll let you all go for now. So thank you for watching. Uh, be kind, love each other. And uh, we'll talk again here. We'll talk again here pretty quick. So for the time being, peace out.